translations of radical functions. Okay, so let's have another look again at the radical or what we call the square root function and explore some of the transformations. So the radical function is defined by f of x equals the square root of x. This is the operation we're doing on x, square root of x, and that results in, in a graph. And this, this graph will have some key points. We're going to be studying these key points to help us with transforming this graph as we have done in the past with, let's say, the parabolas and quadratics. So when defining these key points, think of numbers that are easy to take the square root of, okay? So we can do the square root of 0, right? x is 0, so the square root of 0 is 0. Uh, then I'll do x equals 1 because we know the square root of 1 is equal to 1. And if I, did, if I put x equals 2, that's not so easy. The square root of 2 is not a nice uh, integer. So we'll skip 2 and we'll go to 4. So we, we can do the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. And then we can do the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. So sometimes it's even more easier to just work backwards, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then uh, square these numbers so that you know what your x values are. So these are what we'll use as the key points for the square root of square root function. And these points will be what we'll use in our work on transformations. Now, I'll just uh, graph these points as well, just to show you again what the square root function looks like. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, and 2, and then 9 and 3. And we connect the points with a smooth curve. And you see, so here you get your radical or slash square root function, which is half of your sideways parabola. And this function has a domain of x is every real number such that x is a value greater than or equal to 0. And the range is also very similar. y is every real number such that y is a value that's greater than or equal to 0. Now, the domain and range for this function will change uh, depending on whatever transformations we do to the function. Okay, so some trans. So for example, some here are some examples of the square root function that has been transformed. Now, without knowing any details of the transformations, we can still look at the function graphs here and determine the domain and range. So for the first one, we see that the square root function starts at 1 and 0. So my x values will start at 1 and will go up. So here for my domain, I will say x is the element of all real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to 1. For the range, we see we start at y equals 0, and we also go upwards. So y is the element or the set of all real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, for the next one, the the square root function has been reflected up, uh, you know, reflected the other way. Uh, here it's starting at one and negative four, so the domain starts at one. But now we're not going above one; we're going below one. So here I'm going to say the domain is x is every real number such that x is a number less than or equal to one. And for the range, here we have uh, y is every real number such that y is less than or equal to negative 4. So you can see the graph is going starting at negative 4, and all the y values are below negative 4, okay, as you go back to the left side. Now here on the square root function for the third example, here I start my x values at 4. So x is every real number, such that x is a number greater than or equal to 4. There are no numbers less than 4 on the graph. Uh, and for the y values, we have y is an element of all real numbers such that y is a value that's greater than or equal to negative 3. So you can see your y values start at negative 3 and they only uh, go up. So there are no y values below negative 3. There's no negative 4, no negative 5, etc. And so there is my range. Okay, so now that we have a picture of how to get the domain and range, let's have a now look at some of the transformations. So we're going to look in this lesson at translations, moving the graph left or right, um, up or down, uh, without changing the graph's shape. Okay, so, so we're going to start with vertical translations, and vertical translations occur outside the function. So by this point, before looking at this video, uh, you should be looking at the Desmos activity that will kind of guide you through how these uh, trans 
translations of work um, by graphing them. So this is just more of a let's let's consolidate here. So the square root of x, well the function in the square root of x, and now what we're talking about is adding a three to that function. Okay, so what happens when you add three? Well, uh, f of x plus three is just the square root of x. Outside that we have plus three. Okay, and you'll notice that uh, adding this number and outside the function, well this affects the y value. So your y value is going to change, but not your x's, okay? So again, if you need to, examine the graph in Desmos. So we can have a look at uh, Desmos. Let's get out of tablet mode. Okay. And so here's the square root of x. And if now if I add 3 to it, you can see the graph has shifted up. Okay. So uh, we're talking about... A shift up. So there is a vertical translation uh, up. Okay, now how does this change my points? So we'll start with the parent function again. So if you remember the points, they are 0, 1, 4, and 9, and then the square root. So y equals the square root of x. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so when I graph this translation, the x values are not going to change, but the y values will increase by 3. So the new y values, so it's y plus 3, take every y value and add 3 to it. So 0 plus 3 equals 3, 1 plus 3 equals 4, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and then 3 plus 3 equals 6. And I'm going to graph that uh, transformed function, just like I showed you on Desmos. So here's my parent function. And let's graph the new function. So 0 and 3, 1 and 4, 4 and 5, and 9 and 6. And there you go. So you can see that the graph of y equals the square root of x has increased upwards by uh, u3 units. Now when describing transformations or plotting transformations, we use a notation called mapping notation. So we describe what happens to the base graph coordinates, x, y, or the parent graph coordinates, and they get transformed by saying, well, the new coordinate will be x, x doesn't change, but the y coordinate will change by adding three, so y plus three. Okay, so let's, uh, sorry, that's not a brace, it's a round bracket, so it's a coordinate. Okay, there we go. Now, let's look at uh, what happens when we subtract by 2. So back on Desmos, if I take my base function and I subtract 2, you can see that the graph goes down. So uh, this is a square root of x minus 2. And so what's going to happen is my y values are going to decrease by 2. x values don't change. So we keep the x values, so 0, 1, 4, 9. Let's write down our parent functions. So it's good to write this over again until it, we, we remember it very easily. And then when we map it to the new uh, function, so x is 0, 1, 4, 9. That doesn't change, but the y values will all decrease by 2. So 0 minus 2 equals negative 2. 1 minus 2 equals negative 1. 2 minus 2 equals 0. And then 3 minus 2 equals 1. So the new coordinates are what I'm going to plot here. Um, so let's plot the parent graph again. So 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, and 3. There it is. And then the new graph, 0 and negative 2, 1 and negative 1, 4 and 0, 9 and 1. And there's my transform graph. You can see the base graph, the parent graph, has shifted down by, or translated down by, two units. Okay, so let's have a look at the mapping notation for that. So x, y on the parent graph transforms to x, comma, y minus 2. That's the coordinate on the transform graph. 
So to summarize, whenever you add a value outside your function, so the square root, function, square root of x is your function, we add something to it, uh, that moves the graph uh, up if the value is positive or down if the value of c is negative. Okay, so those are vertical translations. Let's have a look at horizontal translations. So now we're dealing with inside of the function. So what happens if you're changing the inside of the function, you're changing your input? Well, that's going to affect the x value. Okay, so when we talk about f of x equals the square root of x, then f of x plus 1 means you're changing the input. So it's going to be the square root of x plus 1. Okay, so we're going to examine what this graph, what happens to this graph. So on the Desmos activity, you would have seen that there was a horizontal translation. So the function will move left. Or if it's in, in other cases, it would move right too. So it's a left-right translation. So there is a horizontal translation. Uh, the function... moves left, okay? So parent function, again, it's 0, 1, 4, 9, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. And now when we map it, what's happening is the y value is not changing, but the x value is. So x is being subtracted by 1. So here is 0 from the parent function, 0 minus 1 equals negative 1. From the parent function, again, 1 minus 1 equals 0. 4 minus 1 equals 3, and 9 minus 1 equals 8. And for the y values, they don't change. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So when I graph these, let's graph the, the parent function 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, and 3. So there we go. And if I graph the transformed function, these are the points I'm graphing. Negative 1 and 0, 0 and 1, 3 and 2, and 8 and 3. Right. So you can see now the parent function, this black curve, has shifted to the left uh, by one unit. Okay. So in terms of mapping notation, we describe that as the parent function coordinate x, y becomes a new coordinate x minus 1, comma, uh, y. Just to show you on Desmos, you can see here that whenever you add x plus 1 in your uh, input, it changes it by moving the graph to the left. It might seem counterintuitive, just like when you transform parabolas, there is that kind of a sign change, right? It's a minus one, it's, it's a left one. Whereas you might think, oh, why didn't it go right? Because it's in the equation x plus one. But the value of c, it, makes, it affects the uh, graph in such a way that you're shifting left. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. Okay, let's look at what happens when we do f of x minus 2. Well, that will change your input to the square root of x minus 2. And here's how that graph looks like. So if I turn this one off and I put the square root of x minus 2, you can see the graph now shifts to the right. Okay, So if it shifts to the right, then you're adding 2 to the x values. So it's, again, counterintuitive to the minus 2 that you see in the, in the input there. So I'm going to uh, write my parent function, 0, 1, 4, 9 and 0, 1, 2, 3. So these are your key points. But when you're mapping, you're taking the x values and you're adding 2 because in the graph it, it went 2 to the right. So from x coordinates, 0 plus 2 equals 2. From the parent function again, 1 plus 2 equals 3. 4 plus 2 equals 6. And 9 plus 2 equals 11. The y values don't change. There's no transformations in the y values. So you keep those same y coordinates. Now, if I plot this graph, so let's start by plotting the base parent function again. And now I'll plot the transform function. So 2 and 0 is where I start. 3 and 1 is where I go next. 6 and 2 comes after. 11 and 3 at the very end. So there is my transformed graph. A shift of the parent function two units to the right. 
mapping notation, I have to describe that as the parent coordinate x, y transforms to x plus 2 comma y. So in summary, uh, f of x plus, so this let's just make a little correction here, f of x minus d moves the graph of f of x to the left if 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 uh, d is positive uh, let's 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 say if if x if x if it's x uh, plus d okay plus a number if it, it moves left right because it's that's what we see up here it's x plus a number right this is what we see f x plus a number but uh, what that means well here d is equal to negative one right um because it's because it's moving x minus one so let's just say if it's x plus d it moves left uh right if it is x minus a number, okay? And so we'll just note here x, yeah, let's x is, uh, x is uh, weird, be careful. Okay, so uh, watch out. Okay. So uh, that's horizontal and vertical translations. Um, Keep, keep practicing the transformations, have a look at more square root functions, change the numbers in Desmos, and uh, try and get a good understanding of what's, what's happening here. Okay, and that ends this video.